This is uh, a pretty big story that dropped last week, but it's been overshadowed, understandably, by everything that's going on. So this is in The Guardian. Michael Moore film, Planet of the Humans, was removed from YouTube. British environmental photographer's copyright claim prompts website to remove film that has been condemned by climate scientists. Okay, so, now, I don't know how many of you have seen this uh, documentary or movie. I did get to see it. I saw it on YouTube before they pulled it down, so I guess I was one of the lucky ones, but they had it up there for free and everything. Um, so I watched the movie, and the movie is controversial. And I've seen, you know, on my Twitter timeline, I've seen basically, it's a 50-50 split. Like, 50% of the people are defending Michael Moore and saying, no, the movie's correct. And then you have another, the other 50% are basically saying like, no, it's not correct. There's a lot of factual errors in there. And he's actually inadvertently helping, you know, the climate science deniers by doing this movie. Because in the movie, he attacks like the, the green industry, the renewable tech, uh, the renewable energy industry. So now, what's my take on it? Well, listen, I'll say up front, just so everybody understands, one of the areas where I'm not an expert, okay, I, I mean, is environmentalism and the climate. I'll just admit it up front, like, usually the issues I know more about, I know more about war, um, I know more about the economy, um... I know probably more than your average person when it comes to environmental issues and climate science, but um, it is not, I don't know as much about environmentalism and the climate as I do about war and as I do about the economy and many other issues. Now, but having said all that, my take on the movie when I watched it, it was kind of mixed. So some of the stuff I think was a fair criticism. Like, like for example, he attacks this industry, I forget, the, what it's called, but it's basically like they say it's, you know, clean energy, but it's just like they cut down trees and then you do some sort of process with the wood of the trees to create energy. And if you're chopping down trees all over the place, is that really good for the environment? No. And then also he shows how it's actually very dirty too. Like this, whatever it's called, again, I forget what it's called. It has kind of like an Orwellian name too, which makes it sound like it's, you know, really, uh, really a, a clean energy resource. But it, he shows how people living in the vicinity of one of these plants, they're, you know, breathing problems and it's, it's toxic and there's all these problems. So, like, that's an example of something in the film that I'm like, oh, okay. So, I didn't know about that. There are elements of the environmental movement, and this is the crux of the film, that the environmental movement and the green movement, that a lot of that is just as bad as um, the fossil fuel industry because the way in which we get there, we actually end up using just as much oil or gas to, you know, create the green technology, if that makes sense. I hope I'm not butchering this in a thousand ways. But that's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. It's like, oh, okay, you guys think you're being heroes and saving the world, and you got this environmental movement, this movement towards green and renewable tech, uh, energy and technology, and it's like, he goes through all of them and says, you know, here's how much oil and gas is used to create a solar plant or whatever it might be. Here's how much is used to create this other form of what's supposed to be green energy. So in other words, the green energy is not really green. And ultimately it gets, it, it benefits the fossil fuel industry. And then he tries to show like, and leadership in the green movement knows this. And he's kind of portraying them as like sellouts. Okay. So that, that's the gist of it. Now, the part of the, the criticism that I have of the movie, movie is that, he doesn't propose any solutions other than other than to say, like, we can't have a perpetual growth economy. Like, we need to 
move away from this endless growth paradigm. And basically, he's arguing, like, you know, he's implying it, if not outright saying it, that, like, we got we just got to move away from capitalism and just reduce our consumption across the board. That's the only way to protect the environment. That's the sense that I get what he's arguing. But really, that's implied. There are no actual arguments as to what to do to fight back against climate change and to do the right thing. And, like, there are no solutions presented. So my takeaway from watching the movie was like, okay, that's depressing, and maybe he has some points, but he's not proposing anything, which just makes it sort of like a dark, nihilistic kind of film. That's just saying, like, everything's messed up, and here's how it's messed up, and that's it. And I didn't like that angle of it. I thought if you were going to kind of pull the mask off of the green movement, then okay, well, what are you proposing we do? Because, you know, it, you can't tear it all down and then not give like, well, here's here's a path that we can take. And he, he didn't really do that. So that's my criticism of it. Other people have said, um, you know, other people have said, no, there's just flat out factual inaccuracies in there. That may be true. Absolutely could be true. But um, I highly doubt like all of the claims are false. Like there's a lot of compelling stuff that's in there that's really kind of overwhelming so i think he's probably at least partially true it's probably at least partially true and he's at least half right that many in the environmental movement kind of know that it's not effective and kind of know that this energy is not the cleanest energy but they go in that direction anyway because they're getting you know compensated quite a bit of money to, to run these organizations and some of the money comes from sketchy places. So I think some of it's true, but I, I also think that there's plenty of people who are run-of-the-mill environmentalists who are like, they mean really well and they think they're doing the right thing and it's a little bit too much of a broad haymaker punch at everybody involved in that, I think. But anyway, so as you can tell, I have mixed feelings on, on the movie. You guys can feel free to I don't know if you've watched it or not, but watch it and then, you know, comment on it and tell everybody what you think because it's it's very controversial. But but now we get to the actual point of this segment. Having it pulled down is total BS. Total BS. And as somebody who's a content creator on YouTube, I can tell you this is weaselly horse crap. When you say, "Oh, I'm going to do a copyright claim against a tiny portion of the movie." A British photographer is doing a copyright claim. They probably only show the picture for under 10 seconds. And he's the whole movie's being taken down as a result of that. I hate this stuff. I hate it. And we've all experienced it. If, if anybody who's in the same field I'm in has experienced that feeling, that sinking pe feeling in the pit of your stomach where you're like, somebody's really trying to like take down the video over this little thing that you use. And it's like, I have an approach that's the polar opposite where like if somebody wants to critique me and they play like a little clip of me saying something so that they can critique me, I don't care. Go ahead. It's fine. I mean, because that, that's reasonable. Like I use CNN clips. I use MSNBC clips. I use clips of other people. Like this is this is par for the course. This is, How are we supposed to talk about these things if we don't show that? So for them to do this really is weaselly and gross and it is censorship and agree or disagree with what, what Michael Moore is saying in the movie, everybody should say, no, leave it up. Leave it up. I mean, if a guy wants to, whatever, I guess, charge a tiny amount to use the frickin' picture, okay. If Michael Moore has to cough up thousand bucks or something and say, here, now I'm paying you for the use of the picture, okay, that's fine. But that's not going on behind the scenes. It's not going on behind the scenes because the point isn't actually like, oh, I'm offended you use my picture. No. The point is, I don't like your movie, so now I want to censor it. That's what that is. And it's goddamn frustrating, man. Anybody who believes in censorship on the left or the right, God, they're so annoying. They're so annoying, and they don't understand. Like, what you're doing, that's the definition of authoritarianism. Those actions are authoritarian. When you want to shut up viewpoints you don't agree with, even if the viewpoint is egregiously wrong, that doesn't give you license to just try to totally take it down which is what they did so listen agree or disagree with michael moore on the movie um it should definitely be left up and they're correct to say this is censorship and that's exactly what they're trying to do to him and so if it starts like this there's no end to it 
can anybody get anything pulled that they just don't agree with it? And so they find a Weasley way to try to, you know, claim a copyright violation or whatever on a tiny portion of it. Is that the door we want to open up? Because there's no closing that door. Once you open the door to censorship and deplatforming and all that stuff, it doesn't close. And you might think, oh my God, well, I didn't like the thing that they're going after, so I'm not going to say anything. All right, well, when they come after you, then maybe you'll care. Because they will. That's the nature of the beast. They will eventually come after you.